and uh, now uh, before we proceed further some more examples uh, which we shall need can be constructed uh, from the old examples so this is to start with the recall the vector space and the subspace so let we leave a vector space over f and say w1 w2 be subspaces over this vector space v over the same field say f so we define uh, now here what is called their sum the w1 plus w2 is the set which consists of all elements w of this form w1 plus w2 where w1 uh, comes from w and w2 comes from w2 so if you collect all these elements uh, of this form then naturally because w1 is from w1 and w1 is a subspace of v therefore w1 is also an element of v likewise w2 is also an element of v so w1 plus w2 this is an element of v so this is uh, contained definitely in v now to check that this is a subspace we need to verify two things that this is closed with respect to sum and the scalar multiplication so let us take that uh, this uh, w is uh, the element uh, say w1 plus w2 and w prime is another element w1 prime plus w2 prime in w1 plus w2 so it is understood here the way we have defined that w1 and w1 prime they are from w1 w2 and w2 prime are from w2 now their sum w plus w prime is w1 plus w2 plus w1 prime plus w2 prime now because of the commutativity these uh, orders can be changed and this uh, can be written as w1 plus w1 prime plus w2 plus w2 prime because we have assumed that v is an additive abelian group now this w1 plus w1 prime is from w1 and the other w2 plus w2 prime is from w2 so this also is an element of w2 now if uh, your alpha is uh, from f then alpha w can be seen as alpha w1 plus w2 now recall the property of the vector spaces because this is a subspace here and therefore uh, these elements are in v and also have the property that they are alpha w1 plus alpha w2 now alpha w1 is in uh, w1 because w1 is a vector space being subspace and same way this also is an element but this time this is in w2 so this uh, is closed with respect to scalar multiplication also and uh, hence uh, w1 plus w2 is a subspace of v is to denote that this is a subspace of v so w1 plus w2 is a subspace of v you can extend if there are more subspaces say w1 plus w2 plus w3 so suppose there are three so if w1 w2 w3 and so on, let us say wk are subspaces of a vector space v or f then their sum is defined as w1 plus w2 and say wk so is uh, so when it is uh, say k is equal to 3 in that case uh, so w1 so w1 plus w2 this is a vector subspace of v and then add this w3 
this is to denote here w1 plus w2 plus w3. So they all are subspaces so here of V. So given any finite number of subspaces, we can define their sum that this sum is in V and this forms also a subspace of the vector space V. For any two subspaces, uh, let us take say W1, W2, here is the subspace of uh, subspace of V. Now, if in addition to this uh, Further, uh, if uh, W1 and W2 intersection, this is uh, just zero as nothing in common. In that case, now W1 intersection W2 is always uh, a subspace that one can prove. And in particular, when W1 intersection W2 is zero, then uh, this uh, sum w1 plus w2 is uh, called direct sum of w1 and w2. So it's an easy exercise uh, to show that if w1, w2 are two subspaces, then uh, as we had seen, W1 plus W2 is a vector subspace. Their intersection is also a subspace of this. Particular cases uh, when their intersection is uh, just zero, and zero will always be there in any uh, subspace, and therefore the intersection uh, will contain zero, and if it is uh, not so, it may also contain some more elements. Now W1 plus W2 is a subspace, W1 intersection, W2 is a subspace. We have defined that the direct sum here is when the intersection is having just one element, namely zero. The same way this can be extended further that W1 and that this is denoted by W1 direct sum W2. W1 direct sum W2 direct sum W3 is actually when you do the direct sum of W1 with W2 and then with W3. So this uh, can be standard into this form that W1, W2, W3, WK are subspaces of the vector space U or F. The direct sum W1 with W2, then with W3, and then so on with WK, is the direct sum of the two subspaces. One, namely the direct sum of W1, W2, up to WK minus 1 with WK. And naturally, this direct sum is a sum and therefore is a subspace. Every direct, every sum need not be direct that uh, one can uh, see. So it's uh, for you to find out the examples. Now, other examples of uh, vector subspaces can be obtained as follows. So let us take uh, W be a subspace of the vector space V over the same field, let us say F. Then uh, define uh, this, uh, what is called the quotient. So V by W is set which consists of the cosets of this form, V plus W. This V comes from V. Now, uh, here uh, this uh, can also be seen as a subspace or vector space itself. So define on this and or in any two elements, say V1 plus W, and V2 plus W. 
two elements so here in v by w the following number one the equality v1 plus w is the same as v2 plus w if and only if v1 is same as v2 and number two how to add these two elements so v plus w sum with v2 plus w is to denote the coset here v1 plus v2 plus w and the third thing the scalar multiplication of a coset here can be seen as alpha v1 the coset of this plus w and this is for every alpha in f and here v1 v2 coming from b naturally you can uh, see that uh, this uh, uh, then uh, v by w is a vector space over f this, this is a vector space so it has a zero so the zero of the vector space v by w is the coset zero plus w which is same as w one can also see a simple thing that uh, this uh, because of this v1 plus w is v2 plus w if and only if v1 minus v2 belongs to w uh, one thing is that uh, this yeah, yeah. So this is V one minus uh, V two. is in w naturally v1 is equal to v2 this is 0 and 0 is always in w but this uh, equality is defined if and only if v1 minus v2. so one can uh, show that the set wise uh, the two cosets are same if and only if v1 minus v2 is in w Okay, so we had seen that uh, V by W is a vector space with respect to this addition and scalar multiplication. Now we have uh, the examples here that uh, given two subspaces, we have the vectors uh, subspace so V1 plus uh, uh, w1 plus w2 and w1 intersection w2 also as a subspace of v uh, one more thing uh, before we proceed further we would like to recall a theorem uh, which we have done in growth theory as well as in ring theory so this uh, theorem is about uh, the homomorphism so let us take that uh, v and uh, w be v and w be vector spaces over uh, the field uh, say f and T be a homomorphism from V to W. So V goes to V T be a homomorphism of, let us say, 
V and suppose the map is also on to W. And uh, let us take uh, the kernel here of this uh, homomorphism BK. So if uh, the kernel of uh, T is uh, K, then uh, K is a subspace here of V and V by K is a vector space. V by K is isomorphic onto W. The proof is almost analogous to what we have done in group theory and then in group theory. So we have a map. The first thing is that always whenever there are uh, cosets involved, one must prove that the map is uh, well defined. So this uh, map T here, you have to define now. This map is uh, V to W and that takes V to VT. Now define this uh, map here. So this is the map that you have. T is the map V to W. And you can have a natural uh, map here. So this is V to V by K. And then you have the map here. Let us take this map. Yes. So an element here, uh, V goes under uh, VT. So this is uh, VT and this uh, element uh, V in V, this is mapped here, is under this uh, eta. So this uh, eta V is uh, v, the coset here. So V of eta is the coset V plus K. So this uh, map F is basically sending this to C. So how the map is uh, defined uh, from uh, here, so F is defined as V plus K going to VT. So this uh, map F is well defined. So the map F, which is uh, from, uh, you can say that uh, this is V by K to W, and that takes V plus K to F of this, is VT. One plus V2. So if V1 plus, uh, sorry, V1 plus uh, K and is same as uh, V2 plus K is an element here uh, V by K and these two elements, if they are same, then what about their images? Their images should also be same. Now, if that is the case, then what will happen because of the equality of the two cosets, V1 minus V2, this should belong to K. If V1 minus V2 belongs to K, that means, that uh, T of this, the image of this is zero. So V1 minus V2 of T is zero because this is kernel. Now T is a homomorphism and therefore this means that this is V1 T minus V2 T is zero. V1 T minus V2 T is uh, zero means uh, this is uh, V1 T is equal to V2 T. And this is basically your so V1 plus KF is same as V2 plus KF. So if the elements are same, their images are also same, and the map is well defined. Always uh, one must prove whenever the quotients are involved that the Posets are involved and the maps are well defined. So once the map is ready with us, now we want to see what about this map. 
So the map is uh, that sends uh, an element of V by K to W. So what is the map F here? So map F is uh, from V by K to W. And the elements are cosets here in V by K. The image of uh, this uh, coset is actually V. And this is uh, what we claim that this is an isomorphism. So we claim that F is an isomorphism. Of V by K on to W. The first thing that F is uh, homomorphism. So for that, one has to see two things so that it preserves addition and scalar multiplication. So number one. So if you have two elements here, say V1 plus K is one element and another element is V2 plus K. And when you take their F, so this means this is the coset of V1 plus V2 and then F of this. The way we have defined that this is V1 plus V2 T. T is a homomorphism, so this is V1 T plus V2 T. And V1 T is so basically the image of V1 plus K F and V2 plus K F. And the second thing is that the scalar multiplication, so alpha V1 plus K. What about F of this? So how the map F is defined that this is uh, alpha V1 plus K of this as P. Now this is uh, alpha V1 plus K of So any element to here uh, in K under T will be alpha V1 T because KT will be 0 and this uh, T being a homomorphism this is simply alpha V1 T and this is the image here of V1 plus K under So this map F preserves uh, addition and scalar multiplication, and therefore this is a homomorphism. F is a homomorphism. F is uh, one to one. One can see that this uh, F is one to one. So there are two things so that you can uh, see that uh, that is uh, if V one plus uh, K of F is V2 plus K of F, then the elements themselves are equal. Now, if that is the case, this means V1, yeah, the map is defined that this is a V1 of T is same as V2 of T. And that makes that V1 T is zero. But then uh, this means that this element is in the kernel. This element is in the kernel that makes that this uh, V1 plus K is equal to V2 plus K. So this uh, map F is uh, one to one and obviously F is on to. So the elements so here because uh, you take in W. So for any element W in W, since uh, T is uh, V on to W, there exists uh, an element V in V such that VT is W. 
but then uh, what we get to for vt this is the image of v plus k under f is same as w so there exists uh, an element uh, here so there exists an element v plus k in the quotient v by k such that its image v plus k of f is equal to w and hence f is constant. So what we have got is that uh, f is a homomorphism, f is one to one, so it's an isomorphism and this map is on to also and therefore v by k is isomorphic on to w. So this is uh, the homomorphism theorem, rather first the homomorphism theorem for vector spaces. One can, uh, of course, uh, have other two theorems uh, also. This is not a difficult thing because of the... So I leave for you as a simple exercise. Uh, so this is not difficult to prove that if W1 and W2 so, if W1 and W2 are subspaces or a vector space V or F, then quite naturally, this uh, say W2, W1 plus W2 and uh, is also a vector space and uh, you can take that this W2 is a subspace of W1 plus W2 take uh, here elements of W1 as 0. Further, uh, W1 plus W2, this is a vector space, and W2 is a subspace, so this is a quotient space. Likewise, uh, we also know that W1 intersection W2 is also a subspace of V and this is also a subspace of W1 and these two are isomorphic. So this is uh, another homomorphism theorem. You can also see that uh, if uh, UV, W are uh, vector spaces such that uh, you are uh, uh, U contains V contains uh, W. So if U contains V contains W are vector spaces over R. Then uh, naturally we have uh, here U by V is a vector space. So U by V is a vector space. V by W is also a vector space. And uh, we also have V by W. So these uh, three are vector spaces. So U by V is a vector space. V by W is a vector space. And U by W is also a vector space. Now this... Uh, V by W is a subspace of uh, this uh, uh, V by <coughs> V is a smaller. So uh, uh, Okay, so U by W is a vector space. V by W is also a vector space. And V by W is a subspace of U by W. And what we have here is V by W. So this uh, V by W. And these two vector spaces are isomorphic. So in both the exercises, what you have to set up a map, for example, in this first one that from W1 plus W2, 
by W2 from W1 and that the kernel should be W1 intersection W2. So that W1 by W1 intersection W2 becomes isomorphic onto W1 plus W2 by W2 by the first homomorphism K. The same way here you have to set up a map from U by W to V by W with the kernel V by W so that you can again use the same here and that will give you these two simple exercises. Uh, recall that we had defined uh, the direct uh, sum and in the direct sum of two subspaces uh, there is uh, another term also what is called internal direct sum, external direct sum. So the internal uh, direct sum of two subspaces, uh, let us take uh, here uh, okay. So let us take uh, VB a vector space so, and uh, just take uh, so two subspaces, say uh, W1 and W2. So let us take W1, 2, W2, V2 subspaces here. Now define the internal uh, direct sum. Internal direct uh, sum here. So we say that uh, V to be uh, internal direct sum V of W1 and W2 if every element uh, here in V in V can be uniquely written as V W1 plus W2 with the W1 coming from W1 and W2 coming from W2 uniquely. That means it can be written as W1 plus W2 where W1 is from W1 and W2 is from W2 and also that whenever there is some such another uh, combination for the same element V W1 prime plus W2 prime in that case W1 is equal to W1 prime and W2 is equal to W2 prime. Now this is uh, called the internal direct sum. V is called the internal direct sum of W1 and W2. So this uh, now we can also define uh, another thing what is called the external uh, direct sum. Now this is a subspace naturally, uh, external direct sum. So a vector space so V is said to be the external uh, direct sum of W1 and W2 here. If uh, what we can uh, write, uh, uh, first of all, uh, define if V is uh, and notation wise, is, uh, this is a notation we shall have for external direct sum. So the elements uh, here uh, of this uh, are defined as uh, a set consisting of ordered pairs W1, W2, W1 coming from W1, W2 coming from W2. So this is uh, the notation to 
define the set of all such ordered pairs and uh, define on this uh, two things. So define on two ordered pairs, let us say W1, W2 and W1 prime, W2 prime. The W1, W1 prime both are from W1, W2 and W2 prime both are from W2 if and only if coordinate wise they are equal and W2 is W2 prime. Their sum is uh, defined coordinate wise plus W1 prime W2 prime as W1 plus W1 prime and W2 plus W2 prime. So this is again of the same type. And finally, third, the scalar multiplication of W1, W2 is that alpha is multiplied to both the coordinates. So this is uh, for uh, every for every alpha in F, W1, W1 prime in W1, W2 and W2 prime in W2. One can uh, prove that with respect to this, uh, this is a vector space. And uh, we therefore <coughs> can see that uh, if V is the direct sum, then we simply denote this as W1 and put this uh, sum in the circle W2 is this vector space like this. The two sums that are uh, defined, uh, they are isomorphic. So this is a theorem that one can quickly go through and this is the last thing. So internal direct sum of uh, say two subspaces of V over F is isomorphic to the, their external direction. The proof means you have to say Every element uh, V in V can be uniquely written as uh, V equal to W1 plus W2 with the W1 coming from W1 and W2 coming from W2. This is what is the meaning of this. Now define the map uh, here T. Here V2, if V is the internal direction, to W1 plus W2, that V goes to this V is, of course, because of this W1 plus W2 in V. It's uniquely written like this as the ordered pair W1, W2. So this is the image here of V. Now you can prove that this T is an isomorphism. So you can prove this is not difficult. So it's a small exercise to prove that T is an isomorphism. Of V on to So for this one has to show that this is a homomorphism, that means it preserves a sum, and to show it preserves sum, so W1 plus W2 is one element, say V. W1 prime plus W2 prime, say V prime is another element, and their uh, sum, therefore, would be V plus V prime means uh, W1 plus W1 prime plus W2 plus W2 prime, and that will be mapped onto the ordered pair having coordinates W1, 
plus W1 prime and W2 plus W2 prime. And the way the sum of the two ordered pairs is defined, that is the sum of the ordered pair W1, W2 with W1 prime, W2 prime. And that means this is Vt plus V prime T. Likewise, alpha time. So this is a homomorphism. It's an easy thing for you to prove. You can also check that its kernel is uh, trivial. Kernel is trivial means uh, you have to see that. Uh, so if uh, V W1 plus W2 belongs to the kernel of T, that means V T is zero since T is a uh, the way this uh, is defined. So Vt is uh, W1 plus Vt the image is this, this is 0. 0 here means uh, this is the ordered pair 0, 0. That means W1 is 0, W2 is 0. And that will make that V is 0. So kernel is 0. So that means T is 1, 1. And is uh, on to naturally, if you take an ordered pair here in W1, W2 in this uh, external direct sum, W1 coming from W1, W2 coming from this W2. And therefore their sum is uh, this element V is in V and the image is VT and this is on to. So that proves that this map is a one to one on to homomorphism and therefore is an isomorphism. So henceforth uh, we shall not distinguish between the internal direct sum and the external direct sum. So we shall uh, wind up with here. Hello everyone. If anyone has any doubt between the lectures, so please ask to the professor. And there was in exercise two. Uh, sir, professor has mentioned that u by w whole upon v by w is isomorphic to u by w v. So please verify that it is isomorphic or not. Professor has not mentioned. He told that it is isomorphic, but you have to verify. And in the uh, external diet product part, there was a type order. The, you have to add two other pair by component wise and professor uh, has written it as without other pair. So that was type order. And one more thing, the professor is following the notation of I and Hurston book. That is we normally write F of X or T of Z, but professor is writing V of T and X of F like that. So yes, anyone any has any doubt other than this or anything else? Yeah, actually this book by chance e book is available. Yeah, yeah, it is available. Uh, you can find, where, you where will Google it? You Google it with the book's name is Topics in Algebra by okay. Ian Hurstein and just okay. write PDF on Google. You will find this book and the Hoffman uh, Kuhn Algebra book also. Can, yes. can you just repeat this topics? Sorry. Uh, can you book, repeat the name of the book? Topics in Algebra. Algebra. By yes, Hustin. Topics in Algebra. This is the book name by okay. Ian Hurston. OK. Well, yes. This uh, is freely available? Yes, yes, yes. you will find okay. it. Just okay. like PDF. And second one? Second one is Algebra. Mm -hmm. And by Linear algebra, book name is Linear Algebra and the author is Hoffman and Kunje. Hoffman and Kunj. Kunje. Kunj, uh, K-U. K-U and Z-E. Z-E, okay. And uh, yes, this if is anyone the... find difficulty I have, I can send, just mail me, okay? No problem. Okay. Yeah, can you, uh, your mail ID? Uh, my mail ID is just M-A-Z. M-A-Z. 19. 
class and professor will provide you as an exercise a lot of things and yeah. also maybe some part may not cover may be possible yeah. and some small things professor will left out to read yourself so please follow the book strictly okay okay as yes. anything else anyone uh, can you can you clarify what the in the u by w by v by w what should that be is one to u by v or v by w Yeah, I don't have no notes also, but you have to just verify yourself. It is isomorphic or not. Just if it is isomorphic, you have to prove it. If it is not isomorphic, then give the counter example. Okay, just make that is question mark true or false like question, and then you have to verify it. If you are unable to verify, then uh, you can ask me later on. No problem. Okay. Okay, sure. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all.